This NFL picks divisional round edition of the Sports Game on Podcast is brought to you by Hall of Fame Bets, the sports betting research platform for parlays, player props, and game lines. Download the Hall of Fame Bets app or visit hofbets.com. Use code SGPN to get 50% off your first month and start making smarter bets today. We're also brought to you by Cut. Cut is a peer to peer uh, social betting platform that's US based and available in 40 states. Head to cut.com. That's K U T T. Dot com and use promo code SGPN for a 10% deposit bonus. And we're also brought to you by the SGPN merch store, 15% off everything when you use the promo code PLAYOFFS. Hey, this is Derek Stevens. I'm the owner of Circle Las Vegas. You're listening to SGPN. Let it ride. Welcome everyone to the Sports Gambling Podcast. I'm Sean, second the money green with my partner in picks, Ryan. Real money, Kramer. What's happening, Kramer? Dog. Uh, you know, a year ago the Giants were playing in the divisional round, Sean. Oh yeah! Wow. What happened? I also didn't have a mustache. <laughs> So. Times are changing. <laughs> yes, the Eagles were also playing in last year's divisional round. Destroyed the Giants, uh, thirty-eight to seven. Ryan, what would you rather have? Would you rather have your team in the divisional round getting destroyed or at home getting ready for the draft? Well, I mean, uh, always in the divisional round. Okay. I mean, if you're if you, if you're saying not the divisional round, you're an NBA fan. Yeah. You're a loser. It's loser mentality. Yeah. It's not fun to lose. My team's out. There is a certain. I'd rather lose all the games. Mm. <laughs> yes, uh, the people that were. I mean, I, I and you know we'll talk about it. But aren't the Bucks just a great example of why that loser mentality, that tank mentality, that this shit doesn't fly in Todd the National Bulls. Football League? Todd Bowles ain't. Tanking. How many people said, "Oh, they don't have Brady, blow it up. Oh, they don't have a quarterback, blow it up, tank." Yo, you get Caleb Williams on this team, they'll be really good. I, I believe part Tell of Tell that to Baker Mayfield. And, and Baker's been a great story. I mean, it's really annoying that he uh beat the Eagles, but you know, I now that he got humbled as the as a first over on pick, he's he's kind of turned into a likable guy. That yeah, you want to talk about most profitable <laughs> team for me this season, it's got to be the Bucks. Uh they've been juicy money line dogs the entire season. No one believes in them. And uh, shout out to the random Bucks fan who keeps sliding into my DMs, and he's like, "Thanks for always believing." Sorry, your Eagles suck, which was it was bittersweet. I appreciated the shout out, but yeah, I mean, if the Bucks were an NBA team, they would have tried to blow it all up. But yeah, this is the NFL. There is no blowing it up. I mean, oh. ironically, the one team that needs to blow it up would not benefit at all from blowing it up. The Carolina Panthers. Need to blow it up or should have blown it up, but they they don't have their first pick. No, actually, the Carolina Panthers did blow it up NBA style. They threw all their yeah. assets at a single thing, yeah, uh, and it failed miserably. Um, if anything, you have you know the the rebuild example would be Detroit, who everyone's been highly critical about how they've allotted some of that yeah. draft equity that they picked up in that deal. Uh, another team that was that, that we're certainly going to point well, to I, Chicago, who has routinely just thrown away high second round picks like they're nothing, and they've kind of lucked into some stuff. So yeah, who knows what the right thing to do is? Probably play football. Yes, because I, I think the difference, unlike the NBA, the difference between there's the, no Dan Campbell equivalent in the NBA. A guy who and I still don't think it was a great uh, move to play your starters, but maybe that's what they needed and. Yeah, you know, Sam Laporta still got so, a touchdown, even though he got injured. So yeah, I mean, I guess you know, using the the narrative of you have to tank to get a top quarterback to have yeah. a chance. We're looking at a, a playoffs where you have Josh Allen, top ten pick, but not the number one guy. Patrick Mahomes, uh, not a top ten pick, or was he ten? Uh, Eleven. He's right? right around the ten. Uh, not the number one pick. Jor- Jor- Jordan Love. End of the first round, first round guy. Yeah, not the top guy in his class. We go to Br- Brock Purdy's an obvious one. <laughs> you can just kind of br- Jared Goff. He was the top Left guy. Left for dead. 
Baker Mayfield, he was the top guy. I know it is. They funny. aren't the class of this playoff <laughs> field. And then CJ Stroud, not the top guy. In yeah. fact, so much not the top guy. People were going out of their way talking about how bad of a decision it would have oh, been to should, make him the top guy. Don't let wait, I'm blanking. Who is the coach? Uh well, what for do you the mean? Texans? Uh D- to me, oh, no, Lovey Smith. Oh, Lovey Smith. <laughs> that's coaching malpractice to let Lovey Smith go out and win that game. Meanwhile, it was the best thing that's happened to the Texans yeah. franchise. It's it, and again, it, uh, like unlike the NBA, the the cream is a little bit less clear uh, from the crop. And I think too often, yes, it helps to pick in the first round when it comes to quarterbacks. Yes, it helps to have a franchise quarterback for sustained success, but the Two of the franchise quarterbacks are doing it on teams after being thrown <laughs> after out at it. least once. Yeah, they were taken out with the trash. So I mean, if you Baker's remove on that shit, all of a sudden it's like none of these guys are Caleb Williams. Yeah, they're all fucking Jaden Daniels, or they're all Michael Penix, or Will Levis, or whoever the fuck, it, not the top guy was that year. Ryan, so much to get to. Uh, we'll be joined. Eli by- Manning was the top guy. <laughs> we'll be joined by a special guest here. Uh, we got a new addition to the soundboard. Shout out to Jeff Jeter sending a donkey sound effect. Although <laughs> we, I, I played it. It was a great donkey sound effect. But honestly, for the folks at home, like I, I didn't realize how piercing and like screeching a donkey sound effect. Sean was. and I learned today that donkeys are not aesthetically pleasing to the ear. You would trust me. You don't want an actual real donkey. Um, so <laughs> I, I dug deep and found a different donkey song. It's a uh, holiday donkey. It's Dominic the donkey, <laughs> which is a part of a, uh, a hilarious, like old timey Italian Christmas song. It's v- super. Call it a carol. Yeah, it's super <laughs> Italian. Basically, uh, Santa's sleigh can't go through the Italian mountains. <laughs> the only thing he has is this boy Dominic. <laughs> it's Dominic the donkey. King of the king. <laughs> The Italian Christmas donkey. I love Dominic. If you Shout grew up in the tri state area, uh, uh, you definitely heard this on the radio growing up in yeah. the holiday season. If not, you may. This might be new to you. So, yeah. Enjoy in, Dominic in, the donkey. In the spirit of. Uh, it's Dominic the donkey. May his soul rest in peace, uh, Tommy DeVito. And also, <laughs> may his soul rest in peace, Big Dom. Only seems fitting to have an Italian donkey. And I hope if we get flagged for a copyright on Dominic the donkey, I it, it'll be a it'll be a proud moment for the show, Ryan. <laughs> it's Dominic the donkey. Hey, why can't we monetize this video? Oh well, do, do, <laughs> Dominic we, the donkey. We gotta slap it. We gotta give the kickback up to Dominic. He is Italian, Sean. All right, a uh, couple contest updates to get to. Of course, uh, shout out to this week's Patreon prize pick 'em winner. Uh, Matthew Perkins cashing a hundred dollar circuit ticket, uh, which will be be uh, putting in for him on Friday. Sportsgamblingpodcast dot com slash Patreon. This week's contest uh, sides, totals, and props. So it's still all NFL this weekend, uh, but you know, limited slate. Gotta 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 extend the card. Ryan? That's a fun way to to hey hey honey, you want to do sides, totals, and props tonight? <laughs> Yeah, save that. Save that for the anniversary, uh, Ryan. Date night is canceled. <laughs> what is this week's Patreon? Oh, you put me on the spot again. This is yeah. everyone's. It's not. Uh, it's not on bit. the spot. If I slack you and then tell you. And- oh, all right. Well, we've done. We've done holiday liquor. We've done futures tickets. Which that's uh, yes. Honestly, if I was a, a, a better, I would imagine the re. I mean, not to start reminiscing again, but the idea of ordering something in a mail order catalog and never having an idea of when it's going to show up, but one day it just shows up. Yep. Imagine you order a paper ticket mm. and then one day it just shows up. <laughs> uh, all right. Here's what we're going to do. Uh, Cause we've gotten good response from it okay. and it is playoff season. I think we have to do another autograph mini helmet. Ooh. Okay. All right. Autograph mini helmet. Uh, and we'll toss in some other random shit. Uh, yeah, random office shit. Yeah, maybe, maybe a random old T-shirt. Colby's, some lighters. Uh, uh, Col- you know, some and uh, how about Clearing this? Shit off of how about desk. this, Kramer? We will send them an autographed mini helmet. Do we have a mini helmet? 
in uh, stock. There's someone. Uh, there should be one lying okay. around here somewhere. So an autograph mini helmet and a random prize off of Colby's desk. Oh, yes. Does Colby, Colby get to pick his... it? He <laughs> no. will be in the office tomorrow. No, no, he doesn't. Do, does get Colby choose. get to watch us choose? <laughs> yes, we will choose to send you a random prize off Colby's desk, included with the autograph mini helmet. Of course, get in on the Patreon. Check out the Colby bonus episodes. Those those are awesome. The Lenny Dykstra bonus episode, uh, one of my personal faves. Sportsgamblepodcast.com slash Patreon. And uh update on the playoff pick'em challenge. Of course, that's brought to you by Edge Boost. Edge Boost is the first bet now, play later provider. Enables you to double your bet at any sportsbook or DFS site with no interest. Of course, top three. I'll get a deposit match in Edge up to twenty five hundred dollars in credit, interest free for uh, first month, twenty five hundred or sorry, the next the top twenty five get deposit match up to one thousand dollar credit, interest free for the first month. Current leaderboard, and again, uh, yeah, the DFS, uh, you know, the deposit match with no interest, uh, pretty awesome. So again, you started out with ten thousand units. Uh, nasty canasta ten is on a heater, seventy eight thousand nine hundred eighty one units currently in first. Doctor Carnaggy. Oh, man, imagine if you, this is your actual doctor and you find out that he's in so second. Think, do you think it could be the guy from uh, NBC that rolls his sleeves up and does the percentages? Uh, you know, I I don't know. I that would be uh th- that guy is a great character. Uh, sixty five. Th- imagine you corner the market in percentages. <laughs> he does really own it. Hey, you know odds? Can you do that for football too? Uh, Dr. Carnaghi, sixty-five thousand, and then Drip, one hundred two four nine five in third place with thirty. Our usernames are always the best. Uh, shout out to Kyle P with his all-time Adrian Peterson. Uh, Baked four twenty six nine six nine. Yeah, you, you. We should give bonus points if your uh, if your name has four twenty or sixty nine in it. Uh, Thirty-seven thousand three hundred units there. So shout out to those guys. Best of luck and. Again, still plenty of time. Uh, just load up on some money line dogs if you're behind and uh, got a chance to catch up. Go on a little bit of a run here. All right. Uh, and before we get started with some picks, and we got plenty of them, all the odds are going to be coming uh, courtesy of DraftKings Sportsbook and the official sports betting partner of the NFL playoffs, bringing you an offer that'll help make the playoffs electrifying. New customers can bet five bucks on any game and get $200 instantly in bonus bets. Oh, do I got a opportunity on some bonus bets uh, later on in the podcast? You know, uh, we love giving out some sweet, sweet parlays. Perfect uh, match there for some uh, for some opportunities to unload those bonus bets right now over on DraftKings Sportsbook. The Tampa Bay Bucks are getting six and a half points in uh, Detroit, even though the the game is in cold weather, according to that uh, one reporter, that that clip still blows my mind. Uh, download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use code SGP. New customers bet just five bucks to get two hundred instantly in bonus bets only on DraftKings Sportsbook with code SGP. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call one eight hundred Gambler. Visit www. one eight hundred dot net. New York, call eight seven eight seven Hope N Y in Connecticut. Help is available for problem gambling. Uh, please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino Resort, twenty one plus. Age varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issue and see dkng.com slash football for eligibility and deposit restrictions, terms, and responsible gaming resources. All right, enough of the business. Time to uh time to start having some fun breaking down these games. We got two Saturday, two on Sunday. We are going to skip ahead to the matchup of the Packers at the San Francisco 49ers because we are going to be Joined by the one and only Katie Mox, you know her from the Moxie Bets podcast, CBS, all over the place, uh, Omaha Audio. What's happening, Katie? Hi, guys. You know, I came on at the beginning nope. of the season Katie's where everybody was bright eyed and bushy tailed talking about it, and then there was only one <laughs> left in the playoffs, and it's me, fellas. What's up? Bang, bang. <laughs> uh, oh, <laughs> that, this isn't bright eyed and bushy tailed. <laughs> This isn't bright eyed and bushy tailed. I literally have a bushy yeah, tail Ryan does have, on my face. <laughs> Ryan does have a bushy bright-eyed. tail on his face. <laughs> Katie does have that. My team is in the playoff glow. Yeah. I'm about jealous. her. Uh Katie, we'll get started. Uh how are you feeling? Packers at 49ers, rest versus rust. That's always a bit of a concern. I mean, especially with this 49ers team. Again, good problem to have. 
but uh, you know, they destroyed the commanders. But then before that, it was a, it, you know, kind of got waxed there by the Ravens. And then they <laughs> didn't need to play their starters yeah. against the Rams. And then they didn't. Uh, and then they had a bye week. So it's kind of been a while since this team played competitive football against a good team. Are you worried about maybe starting slow? That whole thing. Are you are you worried at all for your Niners? No, I'm not worried at all for the Niners. I mean, they're four and zero versus the Packers in the postseason. Shanahan two and zero over oh, McFlore. Yes. So just when we look at the past, uh, I'm not that. And you know what? The funny thing is too is that I feel like there's so much recency bias with the Packers because they absolutely blew out the Cowboys, but. If you look at their history, they've won 10 of 11 games versus the Cowboys. So it should have told us that this was possible. This is going to happen. And Packers fans are so funny to me right now because I feel like before the Cowboys game, everyone was like, fire Joe Barry. He sucks. He's the worst. <laughs> yes. now, all of a sudden, they think they're like this defensive juggernaut who could stop anybody like Christian McCaffrey, Debo, Brandon IU, Kittle, you know, use check, all of them. Um, so I would say no, um, I'm not worried about it. And also <laughs> you've got to think like this, this Green Bay, yeah, come on, I'm not worried. But this Green Bay defense, they had to play 89 snaps against Dallas on Sunday. It's a short week for them. They could run out of gas against Shanahan's offense that already, you know, exhausts people just who are healthy. And this Packers team, I feel like they've had – you know, several weeks of playoff type of games just to get into the dance. So they're tired. They're going to lose again. <laughs> right. Uh, you know, I really like that angle. I didn't, I was not equipped with the Packers are tired after playing all those garbage snaps <laughs> against <laughs> the Cowboys last week. Well, short rest week. That's worth yeah. it. I, I, and uh, you know, Katie's confident because Kyle used check <laughs> got a shout out. They're like, not going to be able to stop Kyle use check. Well, I mean, his wife is setting the world oh. ablaze right now, dr oh, dressing yeah. all the <laughs> Hopefully we can we we can get in line to get a use check. Oh uh, yeah, it'd be pretty pretty sick to get an SGPN uh, designer the, the use check. Is, yeah, nailing the jacket. I just like saying I want a use check. <laughs> I want to give me a use <laughs> check. <laughs> Katie, what is your what is your most in your mind the best matchup in the 49ers <laughs> favorite? Because I think, uh, you know, as much as the Packers defense has struggled, I think really you know the ground game I think would be the oh. biggest concern, Christian McCaffrey. But is there? Is there maybe a matchup under the radar that's not getting talked about that you like for the 49ers? Well, I mean, obviously Jair Alexander had a pretty big game uh, versus the Cowboys, but he is nursing what an ankle injury. Hopefully, hope I mean, hopefully not, but you know, maybe he'll practice tomorrow. <laughs> He's not going to be 100. But you talk about um, you know the run game. Well, the Packers defense this season. They rank 27th in DVOA versus running backs in coverage, giving up six catches for 32 yards per game. They're 26th in DVOA versus tight ends in coverage, giving up six catches, 53 yards per game. So I actually think this is going to be a huge game for McCaffrey and Kittle in the passing game. So maybe they stop, mm. um, you know, M McCaffrey on the ground, which is very hard to stop. But I would, you know, look, you can't, you can't stop. You can't keep a good dog down, if you know what I mean. So <laughs> I look for McCaffrey in the passing game. Uh, and yeah, I mean, as we saw from that photo circulating, McCaffrey learned how to be a good dog from sh the great Shannon Sharp. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, uh, A.K. Unk. Um, no, I mean, Katie's in so my cute. notes. The DVOA, she's spitting DVOA. She's talking about how the Packers. I mean, it's still jo Joe. What we, we all of a sudden we like Brady's defense. That's the. I think that's the biggest outside of the Jordan loves the greatest quarterback in the world now. A conversation. Joe Barry has not performed well against the 49ers ever in his career <laughs> at you know, as so like what what are we talking about here? They wanted to put him up on the on the state and I, now now they're just not talking about it. No, they they've they're certainly just, moved on. <laughs> they were just brushing it under the rug. I mean, they did yeah, they did kind of dominate that Dallas Cowboys offense. Now, they, yeah, sure, Cowboys put up a bunch of stats, bunch of yards. A lot of that in garbage time. Ryan, you mentioned DVOA. Great transition to here. Since week nine, Green Bay is number two in offensive DVOA, oh, wow. top five both running and passing. So you like the matchup for 49ers offense against this Joe Barry defense. Are you worried at all? Now there there has been opportunities, uh, you know, in the passing game. Uh, with these receivers against the 49ers defense. <laughs> the look Katie's giving you right now. <laughs> That's gonna become a gift, Katie. Um are you worried are you worried at all about your defense? I'm getting I'm, no, I'm sensing you're not. 
No, I'm not. But uh, but to to your point, all right. I'll I'll say one minor negative thing oh. about this team is the, oh, the defense wow. coming the defense coming off of rest has been a little bit rustier. We've seen that um, in some games. So it's possible the defense starts a little bit slow, but this offense starts so fast. I think that 49ers score first. I think they score on the first drive, which is at plus 160, and they just get out, and the Packers are going to have to play catch up, uh, which is going to be harder than them. But, yeah, I could see the defense starting a little bit slower. Hmm. I mean, it certainly could be a sneaky shootout. I mean, if you listen to Packers fans, Dick Punchers in the chat right now, just talking about how this, you know, the Niners are going to have to keep up with the uh, the Packers' offensive attack. I, to me, the, the the angles is is very simple. It's it's it, are we going to be talking about Brock Purdy, uh, you know, super god, or are we going to are people going to be throwing shade at him because he had a bad game? Like that's that's the handicap in this game. If you believe in him. I, I know you believe in him, but I think that's the, that's the handicap here. Is do you believe Brock Purdy is going to show up in this game? And I think when you have a soft defensive coordinator on the other side, and honestly, like any everyone's a step up uh, in terms of mental fortitude from Dak Prescott. So, I, yeah, I, definitely, it, definitely uh, small dog energy. Uh, to me, the handicap is especially with this spread being you know, nine and a half, uh, 10 points. We're picking it right now at nine and a half. They're begging us to take over it. on DraftKings uh, promo code SGP total sitting at 50 and a half highest on the slate. I think to me, if you like the Packers as a dog, you're expecting them to be able to hang around yeah. in a, in a shootout. Um, and I think if you're, if you're a 49ers backer, you're thinking like, Hey, this is going to be 31 17. Uh, we're going to be able to put it on this you know, as to Katie's point, score early and and keep it going. I think, and they mentioned it on the broadcast. To me, the turning point, or at least like early on in that game, when the Packers won the toss and decided to accept the kickoff, yeah. and then went down and just shoved it down the pack the Cowboys' throat. It's fabulous. Yeah. That was. The, I mean, that's how you play as an underdog. That's how you play to win. Um, so I think if the Packers are going to hang around, you you know, it's very simple with the 49ers. If they get out to a lead. They are very yeah. good at hanging on to that lead. So the Packers want to hang around. Um, there's also, I think, what is it? The, the uh, almost all the wins, every win but one of the 49ers has come by um, double, digit. double digits. Yes. Oh yeah, they take care of business at home. I mean that they do. Katie, well, what, actually, uh, they've been better on the road this year than yeah. at home. I mean the double digit thing, yes, but as far as they're against a spread record and just straight up record, it's it's weirdly this year, better um, on the road. Can I say one thing about Brock Purdy though? Because there yes. has been some chatter this week about how he's not very good <laughs> under pressure. Um, I will mm. say since week 10, he's number one in yards per attempt. He's number one in completion rate. He's number five in PFF grade. The tape and the data oh. indicate that Brock Purdy <laughs> is excellent <laughs> under pressure. Well, I, yeah, I mean, I think the way that you get to Purdy is you you blitz him exotically. That's again not something that Joe Barry does. So you don't have to be worrying about that. You have to worry about him diagnosing where where in the zone he can attack, and that's something he does very well. I, I I'm you not know, a Brock Purdy guy, but I think he's gonna have a great game. What do you mean? Every uh, time I see you, you're wearing Brock Hard Purdy shirt. Uh, <laughs> he does. It's, it's he does mostly really ironic I, or sarcastic. See, I, I, I stopped wearing it once they played in the NFC Championship because I couldn't wear it. Um, I have you know. a picture of him with a Brock Purdy shirt under a golden corral. I mean, I, that wow. wasn't meant to be a compliment. I forgot. Wow. I forgot about that whole uh, storyline. Well, Katie, uh, give us some props. What do you like? Ooh. You you already kind of threw out uh, 49ers to score first at plus one sixty. Uh, yes. How say you on some props yeah, for the uh, 49ers? Yeah, well, we're doing the 49ers over their team total. It's high. It's at 30 and a half. But if you've been riding Ooh. this all season long, you have been very profitable. And yes, the Packers upset the boys. But again, if you look at that matchup history, the the, the signs were in the clouds, if you will. The 49ers are a different story. 0 and 4 in the playoffs. That's what the Packers are um, against 49ers. Shanahan again, 2 and 0. And like I said, this Green Bay defense, 89 snaps against Dallas on Sunday. Short week. They have been playing playoff type games for several weeks now. They are 
tired. So give me that um, over the 30 and a half for the 49ers. I also like Kittle. I like Kittle for an anytime touchdown. Mm. I like Kittle over 52 and a half receiving yards. Like we said, Packers defense, uh, number 27 in DVOA, defending the middle of the field, which is where you will find George Kittle, that whole Kittle down the middle thing. Yeah, that's what he does. Hey, um, Kittle, and that's, Kittle, you know, Kittle down the middle. Oh, <laughs> you feel free shirt. to use that, Katie. That's feel free. By the way, that's a shirt. I think you got to make that one. Hey, diddle, diddle, kittle down the middle. Um, but yeah, I mean, look, worse than even the Eagles were down the middle. We're in 26. Oh, wow. uh, Cowboys at uh, 24. Um, and the Packers are 25th in the regular season in touchdowns to tight ends. He averages over this mark at 63 um, and a half yards. So love him to do that. Love him to get into the um the end zone and then i think that's kind of all i haven't dug into any like super serious props on this usually thursday is the day i get in there but yeah like niners team total i like him to score first and i think everybody should really be looking at kittle props i kind of you know play in some of these contests kittle's very very unpopular he will be very low owned and it does seem like kittle having one of those kittle games Oh, against yeah. the soft defense that well yeah and and he did have Ferguson a, just went nuts garbage time I understand yeah but Ferguson had an insane game yeah he did have um yeah Kittle did have a good run there with uh, with Purdy we'll see if they can get back uh yeah Kramer what are you doing here what do you what do you like in the matchup oh it, it, we we talk about how the divisional round is a filter and we often see a team that has an exciting victory that gets the fan base very excited, very overexcited. And then generally that comes crashing down when they run into a really good team. This year we we even as a as a betting population kind of believe the two one seeds are even maybe head and shoulders above everyone else. Mm. So it's not just a normal step up, it's a massive step up. And the fact that people have convinced themselves, I mean, I, again, my giants were in this spot last year, this exact spot. I was stoked. I put a, a, a fuck ton of money on the giants money line and it never had a chance. That's but right. The- Ryan one seeds are 35% against the spread uh, when favored by 10 or less. Yeah, that's fine. I, you, okay. I, I'm, I think the 2024 will be the year I completely uh, I'm out on trends, <laughs> especially right. when they go against my point. Okay. I, but I think specifically with the teams playing the one seed this year, not to give away my, my, uh, my pick on that game, but it just seems like it's a step up in class. And the fact that we're seeing public dog Packers, public dog Texans makes a lot of sense. The spread is telling you all you need to know, begging you, begging you to grab that Niners before it gets to 10. I'm surprised. Apparently every time it gets to 10, it gets bet back down. That's the even more puzzling part. Well, they're, they're begging, Jordan, they're begging and, me and I'm hearing people put Jordan love. I'm, I'm hearing people put Jordan love in lists that include Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson. Mm. Uh, I'm also hearing them put CJ Stroud in these same lists. Who has more playoff wins Lamar or uh, Jordan love? Oh, wow. Well, no, no, it's the same, right? Well, it's Lamar one. has oh, one wow. playoff win, so they're tied. Yeah. I think Lamar has small right. Small sample he's size. Four. Small sample size. Uh, but but uh, the point is, I yes. think um, I think when you look at this Packers team, you're probably buying at a very expensive price right now after what just happened in prime time. I mean, they somehow McCarthy still has his job, which uh, thank the good Lord Jerry Jones that he decided to keep him. This Packers team is the single most overvalued team this weekend. Katie's right. They win by what? Two touchdowns on average. That seems seems about right. This game gets out of hand early. They're going to the offensive line for the Niners is just going to push the defensive line for the Packers around. And it's going to be a boring game. And and yeah. that look yeah. that Katie has right now, that's going to be the look uh, that Nick Bosa has looking over at Jordan Love when he starts. Do we remember when we were talking about Jordan Love making some of the most erratic throws in the NFL? Yeah. Just wait for that to come back tomorrow uh, or uh, this weekend. I'm taking the Packers. Give me the Packers. <laughs> really? Plus nine and a half. Really? Yeah, of course. Nine and a half. Were you re- right? You're not surprised. Aaron Jones running insanely hard. I I think I like some of their matchups offensively. I think they're I think they're going to be able to move the ball. And I think, well, I don't think he's going to have the golden sombrero like he did oh. against the uh, Ravens throwing four interceptions. I think you give me one or two Purdy interceptions, and I think this is a game. Um, so, yeah, I'll, I'll take the Packers plus nine and a half. 
Katie, you you think I'm you you think I'm crazy? Um, I think you're a hater. Um, I think you I think your <laughs> team just lost. Fun. And the Niner yes. and the Niners were a big part of what demoralized the Eagles and started this, you broke this my team. run of failure that ended the season. And so you can't allow yourself to back the 49ers <laughs> yet. Maybe when we get to the Super Bowl, you will have come around. You've come around in years past. And I yes. appreciate that about you. And but it's too fresh. It's just like last year when y'all had me on after the <laughs> NFC championship game. I couldn't, I couldn't bet the Eagles. I just yes. couldn't do it. So but, I understand. And it and it and it ended up working out for you because the Eagles lost and, and the Chiefs won. <laughs> All right. Um, we'll see what happens uh, this it's, week. It's, but not, it's still raw for Sean, <laughs> clearly. No, I mean, you in know, some what, ways. What I, will, what I will say is something interesting about this game is we will see two rookie kickers, right? So special Ooh, teams. You think, yeah. back, you think back to that uh, in Lambo, Robbie Gold, you know, blocked field goal, the punt. He came in drilled, you know, the winner in the snow. What are we going to get now with these two rookies? And, and Jake Moody, a lot of 49ers fans um, are worried about him and his ability, not like Robbie Gold, who, you know, friend of the pod for you guys, uh, you could always yes. rely on. So special teams will be interesting, I think, in this matchup. That Green Bay kicker is a problem too. <laughs> he, I mean, he's he he's the kind he's the guy that's like, how is he still on the team? Well, Bay Area always kind of sneakily a a tough place to uh kick. Uh, Katie, final score prediction. What do we got? Thirty-one seventeen feels like what you're angling for, but what do you what do you got? Final score. Forty-two oh, seventeen. Forty-two what? <laughs> Forty-two seventeen. These, I love that. These Nineers are allowed to drop forty. They're not allowed. We, y'all y'all both know what that feels like. So yeah. Oh man! Wow. Really, really uh, nice in the back. Katie, uh, I know you're going to be out in Las Vegas covering the Super Bowl, CBS Sports. Yeah. The question everyone's everyone wants to know: Jimmy G still currently lives out in Las <laughs> Vegas. Are you going to accidentally run into Jimmy G? Have you completely moved on from Jimmy G now that he hasn't been the 49ers quarterback for a while? Update the fans on where you are with uh, Jimmy G. It's a really good question. Um, <laughs> I'm a if journalist. I I well, yeah, hard hitting, hard hitting. <laughs> if I happen to run into Jimmy G, I he'll definitely get a double take. Um, I may even ask for a picture, although probably not. <laughs> um, I will not be tracking him down. I have moved on from him. I'm curious to see. Oh. Where, well, not not he's still over my shoulder here, guys. Okay, so he's, yeah. he's always gonna yeah. have a place on the shelf. Uh, and I do, and I love Jimmy G. But not only is he not playing for the 49ers. Homeboy's not playing at all. Um, so <laughs> Katie, I'm, Katie I'm, needs yeah. a starter in her life. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, like uh, you I know, mean, free agent uh, trying to land a vet minimum. That's not really Katie's vibe. Yeah, look, uh, I put in a lot of good years with Jimmy Garoppolo. Yeah, you did your time. Um, and <laughs> yeah, I did. I did my time, and we're on the Purdy train now. And uh, you know, if Purdy comes in and wins a Super Bowl. Um, that's just going to be uh -huh. the ultimate salt in the Jimmy uh -huh. G room, right? Oh, uh, well, it, Katie's going to show up with, and like overall, she's going to start bailing hay. She's going to be living that Iowa <laughs> lifestyle with that face. Oh, my God. <laughs> Look out. Katie, appreciate you as always yes. coming on. Uh, make sure you follow Katie on Twitter at Katie Mox. Check out the Moxie Bet podcast, CBS Sports, Pick Six podcast. And uh, best of luck this weekend. All right. Bang, bang, Niner gang. And I'll All see right. you out there. Let it ride. Yes. See you, in Vegas. see you out there in Las Vegas. Uh, Ryan, uh, man, we got a bunch of games to get to. Always fun chopping it up with Katie. And uh, we do have to isolate that face as, as a <laughs> gift. That that's perfect. Uh, she had some she had some great expressions. Just, you know, we're doing this the interview remote, but you could right, I could feel the heat, the daggers that were getting fired over by Katie. Truly lasers. Well, Katie and I are on opposite sides. Maybe uh, we should sync up over on Cut because Cut is a peer to peer social betting platform. It's US based, available in 40 states. I can put up my money and have uh, Katie try and take my money. That's what's so fun about Cut. You actually know who you're betting against. You're putting a name to a face. Uh, you want to uh, get some action against fellow SGPN guys. We have a listener uh, group there as well. Um, it's just, it's super fun. Of course, uh, K U T T dot com. You can use a promo code SGPN, get the 10% deposit bonus. They also have a bunch of fun stuff. That's not your traditional sports bets. 
Um, you know, good example. I saw they they have uh, Will Belichick be the head coach of the Chargers come May first. That's something you can get down on. Again, a lot of fun, and obviously, if you're betting someone head to head, a much better uh, pricing there for everyone. But yeah, hop in, uh, challenge someone to some bets. And Ryan, I know you're going to be putting out a bet. Are you? Are you ready to announce? Are you going to put out uh, some 49ers minus nine and a half? What are you going to be I, doing over I, on cut? Well, I figured I would just put all my action. I hmm. think I'm going to have, you know, we, we give out two locks. I'm at minimum. I, I have two very strong positions. I plan on uh, dangling out there. I was trying to figure out the correct amount for each bet. Maybe uh, $420 of action in each. Ooh, each okay. Game. I like that. We'll see if I can get. I'm, I was, I was having you, some. You issues. don't have to get the entire bet. Like if you just want to take oh, yeah. sixty bucks of Kramer's bet, you can do that, and then other people can fill it. So yeah, sixty nine here, sixty nine there. <laughs> it adds up, and of course, we're also brought to you by Lucy. Uh, Lucy stands out in a otherwise boring AF market because every other nicotine pouch company is owned by Big Tobacco. Lucy has pouches with flavor capsules for an instant rush. Uh, I mean, if you're sweating out bets and you don't get those uh, those sweet, sweet Lucy pouches, these things are great. Way uh, less messy than traditional um, dips or snooze. Uh, very clean. The taste is great. I'm on the uh, eight milligram nicotine. Give you that nice little uh, little edge. Uh, perfect for sweating out long. I mean, long day at the office, you can put one in. Uh, great on flights uh, if you're trying to get locked in or just, you know, kind of tune out the flight. Uh, and also it's, it's a great, great alternative. You know, you've heard about, oh, Hey, you know, the friend who vapes on a plane again, you don't want to do that. Or if you're, you're at work, uh, Lucy is a perfect desk side companion. And again, um, you, know, you don't even have to go to the gas station. It can come right to you. Just go to lucy.co slash SGPN and use promo code SGPN to get 20% off your first order. Lucy offers free shipping and has a 30 day refund policy. If you change your mind, that's L U C Y dot C O use code SGPN to get 20% off and always free shipping. Here comes the fine print. Lucy products are only for adults of legal age and every order is age verified warning. This product contains nicotine. Nicotine is an addictive chemical. Ryan read the next uh, uh, price in the game. I'm going to go grab a Lucy real quick. I forgot in the other room. I was going to um, make a joke about uh, vapes on a plane. It's a Sam Jackson flick. Uh, all right. Well, and just to just to confirm, uh, because we were we were dancing around it with uh, with with K- friend of the program Katie Mox, but Sean is officially wow. All right, we're a little close. There you go, right there. Bra- that was nice. That was nice. Just capture the uh, the top of the tin there. Yeah, vapes on a plane. Sam Jackson get all pissed <laughs> off. Guy, in the why are these <laughs> all these mother effing vapes on this mother effing plane? <laughs> Uh, but just to confirm, uh, final an- answer: You're on the Packers plus the points. You're, yes, and, and uh, it didn't want to, you know, argue in front of our guests. But you, you're not at all worried about how easily the Niners are going to be able to matriculate the ball down the field. Like they're not the Cowboys in many ways when it comes to how they're going to be able to attack this defense at all. You're not worried. No. All right. No, I mean, I, I'm certainly worried. But I understand the the idea of taking a big number. This just yeah. strikes me as one of those public dogs I don't want to be on. <clears throat> All right, let's let's go back in time a little bit. What do you call me, Dominic? Right? No, no, you're not <laughs> Italian. I would never pay you that high, oh, wow. high regard. Uh, to, for my money, the Saturday games. Uh, Packers are averaging 28 points over the last nine games. Again, like the offense is out of control. All right. So, no, I mean, and I, I think there is going to be a lag in the fact that they haven't played competitive football in a, in a long time. I mean, I see Katie's counterpoint of, Hey, they've been having to play these games, but we see this all the time with teams that get hot. a la the Buffalo bills, you know, playing in playoff like games sometimes helps you. So I, I get, I get why, you know, I get why people are on them, but uh, yeah, I, I think things could get interesting. I mean, this is a defense that allowed Tommy DeVito to be the player of the week. Yeah, but that's <laughs> never forget. It's a different team right now, Ryan. <laughs> no, I, I shout I, out to Dick Puncher. He <laughs> inspires me. Well, it's the run game. It's yeah. the and it's the two tight ends being back. And I think that's something that the, the Niners Luke Musgrave and Tucker Kraft, who's stopping them? Well, I, I think you can br- highlight the run game as an advantage, but I do think the Niners are pretty good against the tight end. So let's see how that yeah. works out. 
Uh, all right, let's going back in time. First game on Saturday. Uh, again, they give us the the bigger spread games on Saturday. These are these are still uh, interesting games for me. A much much more interesting DFS slate uh, for me as well on Saturday. Ryan, qu- real quick, breaking news because uh, Boston Capper just texted me. How do you spell Lucy? <laughs> what, no, no, he didn't. It's a big what do you fucking mean? wheel, man. Um, it's well, at Lu- least he's listening to the show. Yeah, Lucy, like the girl, L U C Y dot C O slash. How else do you spell Lucy? <laughs> well, maybe like a Lucy, like a cigarette, but I, I don't know. Is that not? <laughs> is that how do you spell that? Uh, I would spell it L U or L O O S E Y. Oh, like a, okay, okay, okay. Like if, uh, yeah. if you. You know, if you go to like a bodega in New York and you go, give me a Lucy, (laughs) that might be a late. They'll sell you like a cigarette for a dollar. All right, Uh, Houston, the Texans, in a very similar situation as the Packers here, coming off a great win, a quarterback who clearly looks like he's going to be the dude going forward, and they're catching a big number against the one seed, who of course is coming off the bye. Texans also a public dog here. Not surprising. Uh, probably won a lot of people a lot of money last week, and they're just mechanical parlaying that over. Texans plus nine and a half, plus three ten on the money line. A little shorter on the money line there. Baltimore minus three ninety five. Forty four is the total. Um, I think it's 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 very easy to point to what happened last time. Baltimore was the one seed. Lamar was the yep. MVP favorite. Yep. And they came out. They were rusty against a Tennessee team. Um, yep, a little bit different of a team than this Houston team potentially. That that Tennessee team kind of punched him in the a mouth. A little more physical. I mean, yeah. But you know, I think I think the 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 way that the Ravens have approached this season as a as, as a total feels like they're getting more aggressive on defense. They're getting more aggressive on offense. They even though they had like, you know, you have moments where you're like, Oh, okay. They're not, they're not totally dominating. They basically dominated everyone. They played this year. The, the one game, the Rams game was really the game. That was probably their, their toughest test. And I think some people wanted that wanted to see a little super bowl rematch there. Rams Ravens. That would have been fun. Uh, But for me, this is a similar uh, step up that we talked about with the Packers with, I think, even more question about the, the how the offense is going to perform in this defensive matchup because we have seen Stroud buckle in some matchups against stuff for defenses on the road, and then also on the on the flip side is how is this Houston defense going to be able to manage this Baltimore offense? It is a rematch game. We saw this on Week One. Ravens took care of business, easy peasy. And fun little nugget, Sean. Mike McDonald, the defensive coordinator of the Ravens, also saw CJ Stroud in college, where of course McDonald coached for John's brother Jim at Michigan hmm. and saw CJ Stroud at Ohio State. And I, I believe limited uh, CJ Stroud to one of his lower performing games of that season. Of course, he balled out in every game. So, you know, take that for what you will. All of that being said, I do think this is a tough spot for CJ Stroud. I think this is an obvious spot to me where you're grabbing the favorite first and finding a reason to maybe loop back on the dog. And I think specifically in the matchup, in the way that Baltimore plays defense, CJ Stroud is not going to look like this great quarterback in this game. And he's going to have some bad moments. Uh, I think they're going to be one dimensional. Um, if anything, you got to run the ball. I don't think they're going to be able to run the ball because they're going to fall behind. You're going to see Lamar at his best. And yeah, I think I love the Ravens in this. I love the chalk in these one seed games. Well, I, Ryan, interesting because both one seeds have covered only twice in two decades, uh, while they've gone zero and two against the spread eight times in that span. Uh, you mentioned you mentioned some of the stuff with the Texans. Uh, I think a lot of that does apply. Uh, but they just beat a you know a, a pretty competent um, competent Browns uh, defense. Now certainly they weren't the same defense on the road, and I do think the fact that the uh, Flacco also gave them two touchdowns. He did, he did, and that was big. And that if, matters. If you recall, what is Ryan? What have I been harping on as Lamar Jackson's weakness the entire season? He he, uh, he gets loose with it a little bit. He does. And what happened in that first game? Texans played, fumbled twice. I think this and they game, won twenty five to nine. True, but that was that was also C.J. Stroud's first game as an NFL quarterback, and I think he's made tremendous strides moving forward. 
Um, and if you watch that game, which you did, you, I mean, they move the ball. Like it, you know, they convert on a couple of those red zone things. They easily cover a, a big number. Um, you know, th- we're looking at 17 to 35 mile per hour wins. Who does that help? I think that uglies up the game. So I do think it helps the dogs. Like if the bills mm. were brave enough to play in wind, I disagree. Um, okay. No, I mean, that's, I what? think that the Ravens are the more equipped team to deal with a so like, all right. So now you've, you've disadvantaged the passing game for both teams. I think that helps the Ravens. They have the better running game. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. Um, I think their running think game depends general, less on their passing. Well, game in too. general, you would say having high wins affects the total, right? That would lead you to a lower scoring game overall. Oh, absolutely. Macro. So a, yes. I a agree. lower scoring game would benefit the dog. Now I see in this, in this circumstance, if you're predicting the Texans to win or cover, you would expect them um, to get something going here. Ravens are actually bottom five and run EPA defensively. If you're looking at some advanced metrics here, um, I think that's, well, I think if you remove the threat of like pass because the wind is real, I think that is going to change that. Like that obviously changes that because they can, they can focus on the run. Yeah. Um, I, 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 but I also think like, and we were, you know, not to get into the futures markets, but we were the fact that you can still get uh prices on Gus Edwards and Lamar Jackson in terms of leading the playoffs, leading the weekend and rushing type stuff with the win that's projected in that game is pretty crazy. But I, I think also this is just a team that I, I, I think if you're coming to, into this handicap saying that Baltimore is going to be rusty, it's just a lazy handicap. We've seen this team addressed. Uh, we, we, we have seen Baltimore be very introspective in their own process. It came out with the London trip that they, they spent a lot of energy in making sure they got it right this season. I doubt they're going to be caught sleeping here. And I doubt Lamar is going to be caught sleeping here because that was the, like, that was his last MVP year. They don't, he's so self-aware, like they're going to come out firing here and m- maybe I'm, um, I'm going to regret it. And the Texans are going to have a glorious game where CJ Stroud can pass the ball and they can kind of counter punch. I just worry if, if this comes out and and this Baltimore defense is smothering and they well, go down quickly, like how, how do they respond? That's true. If they can't, if they can't ball out and have these 50 yard bombs, like they, they are so reliant on the big play and Cleveland kind of was, a, they allowed them to have the big play. Uh, and then Cleveland's offense also participated by giving them the defense, big plays, Ryan, you have a ton of confidence in the Ravens ability to show up after the bye. but let's, I do. let's take a look at how they showed up after the bye, December 10th at home against the Rams uh, Rams, kind of a similar team, a warm weather dome team, uh, which has a high powered passing offense and man, they kind of put it on them. Uh, got to overtime questionable uh, win there for the Ravens. Uh, with that punt return where there clearly was some penalty. Lamar Jackson didn't look super sharp there. Uh, 24 for 43 did throw for decent amounts of yards, but he, he had a couple really bad throws, including an interception. Um, the defense led up three touchdowns to Stafford. Uh, I'm just, don't you think, don't you think they showed you that they didn't do well off rest? I, I think that's a completely different scenario with a non-conference opponent who for whatever reason brought it that day. And we yeah. even we even talked well, about this on the I, recap I, I show guess, how surprising it was how hard the Rams played in that spot. I guess I'm seeing this something, is a playoff game. I'm though, seeing so a little something bit with D'Amico Ryan's. Well, yeah, and they've showed you what they've done coming off buys off the playoffs. I, yeah, I just highlighted why this season is different okay. and why this and Ravens team I'm, has I'm, been. I'm different. bringing up some counterpoints. I think the connection D'Amico Ryan's has with this team and with this quarterback. I, I'm taking the points. That's I think that's the angle for both the dogs playing the one seed. If the quarterback is able to just do it and make some plays, which if I'm being honest, Jordan Love probably has a better shot to do that. Okay. If the weather's going to be bad. And, and I also think this Texans team defeating the Browns was not quite as impressive as what the Packers did to the Cowboys. Um, the Browns were a team that them teetering and turning into a pumpkin way less surprising than the cow, I guess not for all of us, but the way the Cowboys went down like bitches, <laughs> that was surprising. And so, yeah, I, I guess, yeah, I, but I like the Ravens. I, I think they're going to come out and they're going to be fired up. I think they are going to make the Texans offense um, look like some JV shit. Okay. And 
Lamar. It, this is all about Lamar. With who, by the way, if you hope, hopefully you listened to us last week, Sean, because yeah, if you were if you were liking some of the future stuff, hopefully you got it last we, week. We literally told you if you like the favorites MVP prices, bet them right now. Yeah. Lamar was three eighty; he's now three ten. My chalk MVP play was Christian McCaffrey. He was twelve to one. What is he now? He's Ryan? now six to one. I mean, come on. Uh, jo- CLV Josh Allen was nine to one. He yeah. is now five fifty. So, yeah, and they, you know, like even Allen, they were ten point home favorites. Like it, it I don't know. Yeah, uh, nothing crazy. There, there, there were Jared Goff was twenty five to one. He's now twelve to one. But the the craziest one is the one seats because they always change the price. They don't play. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Uh, yeah. So, um, boy, do I uh, do I just put all the money I have on that money line parlay right there? Niners Ravens. What could go wrong? Feels right? like a lock. Uh, hey, prizepicks.com slash SGPN. Time for our prize picks segment. Mm. Uh, go to prizepicks.com slash SGPN. Deposit there. Get a 100% deposit match up to $100. Ryan, of the games we've talked about so far, what do you like in uh, for a prize pick century? Uh, well, I mean, it. Uh, what are we going to agree on here? I, I can't imagine you think McCaffrey's not going to be able to run on the Packers defense. Okay. Yeah. I mean, McCaffrey uh, getting, uh, he's at 90 and a half rushing yards. I could easily go more there. Uh, yeah. I mean, you could, you could probably, I would, I would, I, do they have the rush and receiving 130 and a half? That's an, an insanely high. I would almost just take the rushing. Yeah. Right? Against that Packers defense, you All know, right. you know who I like the more I've thought about it. Maybe we'll talk about him in our DFS episode. Uh, let's see if they have a price for what Gus Edwards. No, any, any, uh, it's not up yet. But Robert Woods, I think, is kind of an interesting guy um, in this matchup. No, and I'm I'm assuming his total is going to be pretty low. Yeah. Uh, who else you like, Ryan? Uh, well, I mean. Th- I certainly think the game in Baltimore is going to involve the running game. So Gus Edwards to score a touchdowns demon. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's a guy. Yeah. I like in these contests uh, and I like, cause I do think uh, yeah. So McCaffrey more 90 and a half rushing yards, Gus Edwards to get a touchdown, AK more a half. Rushing and receiving yards. We're already at plus three fifty. Do we throw one more in and and chat? Feel free to chime in with the selection there. Uh, well, I mean, we did have. Uh, let's see, there was some kicking talk Ooh. before the program. Do we? Yeah, do we, I, I don't know. I want to. I don't know. All let's, right, how about a Packer? We uh, do we yeah. want a Packer? Do we want a Tex a Texan? Dick Puncher, feel free to chime in. I see him in the chat. I I can't possibly see a path to anyone having success in the pack. If I was gonna play someone on the Packers, <laughs> it would probably be something Aaron Jones related. If I was gonna go to the Texans, that that to me is a better that that's a more Aaron uh, Jones touchdown. We playing that? Are they gonna score any touchdowns? And not according to you. Katie even had them scoring one <laughs> touchdown. Right? Well, two right, seventeen. Yeah, I, I uh, we you know what we could do uh, like uh, pass attempts. Okay. <laughs> C.J. Stroud or Jordan Love. C.J. Stroud's thirty four and a half. Uh, Jordan Love thirty five and a half. That feels like the one. Jordan Love higher. Yeah. Pass attempts. More. I do think they're going to a uh, more. Do think they're going to roast them in the air. Uh, all right, so here we go. Christian McCaffrey, Gus Edwards. Uh, sorry, Christian McCaffrey more. 90 and a half receiving yep. yards. Gus Edwards, more a half rushing, receiving touchdown. And Jordan Love, 35 and a half passing attempts. $100 wins you 600. And of course, uh, get your free 100 by going to prizepicks.com. SGPN promo code SGPN. And shout out to them. They have these uh, receiving yards in the first two catches and rushing yards in the first five attempts. That is, I mean, <laughs> even as a well, it, hashtag digits only. It's like the first touchdown of uh, player props. You just want to, I don't have time for the whole game. Uh, just give me the, the first two, first two. Ca- uh, imagine that sweat. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's electric. You know, we gotta, I mean, I'm shout firing. out to them for uh, offering firing. that market. Um, yeah. I'm firing on some of those this weekend. All right, let's pop along to Sunday, Sean. Let's which, go. which, by the way, have we have we discussed? Uh, are we doing a pregame show on Saturday? I don't know. Dick Puncher's uh, asking for it. 
I'll be I there. mean, is he, is Dick Puncher a, uh, the kind of guy he wants to call in and hype everyone up and get them. All right. So let's just AF TBD, but probably our flight, at one our flight is slightly later on Saturday, 1 PM. Okay. Barring South the game starts at one 30. Yeah. 1 PM, 1 PM. We land we at 10 45. Okay. 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 I'll be here. Okay. Well, I, I might not be here. I got, I got some stuff to do. All right. Maybe I'm, Ryan will call I'm committed. In. I'm committing to uh, yeah, we're, we'll make it happen for Dick puncher. We'll make it happen. All right. Sunday pregame show. The yeah. games, the game started at noon. So we have to 1130, 1130. Yeah. Only a half hour. Yep. I mean, it's two games. Just wanted that on record. Tampa uh, Ryan. Uh, people are asking uh, what a two team money line parlay would pay between the Ravens and the 49ers. If you're eating that chalk, you're eating it at minus one ninety six. Is that the price? Yes. Hmm. Cause 49ers are minus four forty Ravens minus four twenty five. Oh, right. Really? The, the, these uh, some steep Joseph prices. saying only if you guys have Lucy during the pregame, you know, I got a Lucy in right now. Lucy.co promo code SGPN. Got to be careful who's listening. I got a Lu- up. I, I got a Lucy inside of me right now. Uh Tampa heads to Detroit. The Lions. It's a noon Pacific time kick on wow. Sunday, which means it's a Sean is Detroit Eastern, so it's a 3 p.m. local time. Sounds Are they right. Central Eastern? I'm a little worried about the the litness of this. It's an afternoon on Sunday. Uh, I guess people have time to hit the church in the morning, hit the gym, whatever they well, do. Our good buddy Derek Stevens, Ryan, owner and proprietor over yeah. at Circuit Las Vegas, has pointed out to us day games in Detroit, not quite the same yeah. energy. Well, that's what I mean. That's why I'm a little worried. Detroit laying six and a half here, minus two seventy on the money line. Bucks plus two twenty. Forty eight and a half is the total. Uh, yeah, I mean. Uh, just can't can't believe how someone got credentialed up and then asked Todd Bowles about a <laughs> weather question when they're gonna play in a dome. I mean, Todd Bowles really he he's underrated for his facial expressions. Yeah. And um Sean, if people cried after a wild card win, what would what would occur if they uh they they I, got I mean, it done here? You know, I know Easy said they didn't uh dump the Gatorade, but Lions running back David Montgomery said he was pumping gas this week when a woman approached him in tears and thanked him for the Lions playoff win. Montgomery hugged her and thanked her for believing. I, I think this is just such an emotional letdown spot for a Lions team. And you even saw it. You even saw it in that game itself. They got out to the hot start. And then the buttholes kind of got tight. Rams got back in that game. Uh, there's just a lot of tough matchups for them. And there's already been some chirping. Uh, CJ GJ, who is it is good for the Lions that he's uh, healthy and back playing. Quote: If you give that Tampa group a quarterback, that's a great group. Baker, uh, they, <laughs> asked, they asked Baker about the comments, and he said, "You know, uh, I don't think he's really watched film because he also mentioned Russell Gage. He hasn't played a snap for us all year. You need to do more film study." So Baker is calm, he's confident, and they left points on the board against this Eagles team. Now, I think the the path to their success is Mike Evans. Mike Evans against this Lions secondary. You saw what Puka Nakua did to them. And unfortunately for Lions fans, I think I think the Bucks are going to be able to move the ball. I think they're going to be able to throw on them. And I worry about Todd Bowles and that blitz against Jared Goff. Now, if they can the Lions, the counter there is Lions have a good offensive line. If they can pick up that blitz and exploit the Bucks sec- secondary, that's their path to victory. But I also think that Bucks D line does a decent job of controlling the line of scrimmage. Um, you know, lines are good at stopping the run as well, but the Bucks aren't really going to be trying to run that much. Like Rashad White on the ground really isn't the way they win games. Uh, I think it's attacking the middle of the field and and getting Mike Evans going. So why wouldn't this be the same game that already happened? Because I think this Bucks team is a different team. Uh, way more confidence than they had previously. And the letdown spot, I think the letdown spot is real. Um, you know, do, do the bucks not have a letdown spot? I think maybe, but I think you're going on the road. I think they're playing with house money and the lions I think could come out flat in this game. Yeah. I, I, I do think there is something about certainly in listening and watching Dan Campbell 
Uh, and by the way, shout out to all the people bringing up that Dan Campbell was on the Bounty Gate staff <laughs> uh, as it pertains to his comments about his uh, his guys' tackling style. But I I do I do think that he almost certainly will have that element level set with this team. And I think the fact that they already played each other is an interesting element to me. Normally, it's an easy okay revenge spot. I certainly would on, on on paper like Todd Bowles in a take two uh, against this offense, but like go go back and Jared Goff. I don't. I think Jared Goff's gonna. So here's the problem: you go back and watch what what the the Lions were able or the Bucks were able to do against the Eagles. They were able to confuse. Frankly, they confused Jalen Hurts. They confused the scheme, and then the Eagles once again, Sean. We've been talking about this. They had no quick game to respond to it. They had nothing. And and I think that when you watch the way that Jared Goff plays in this offense, they're the opposite in that regard. They will, hmm. I think, be prepared for it. It's fun to say that Jared Goff hasn't uh is not good under pressure. This is the best year he's ever had in his career dealing with pressure. This this offense, he he's matured into it nicely. And most importantly, he has receivers that he can trust in the quick game. I think their offensive line is a. I, again, you haven't answered the question. We don't know what happened to the Philly offensive line, but that Philly offensive line quit or something happened out there. They got punked in a way that you haven't seen Philly's offensive line get punked in a long time. And I think Detroit is the. It, they're in a, another elite offensive line that I would expect to have a nice matchup here and be able to punch back against this defensive line. And that's it. If you can punch back against the defensive line and you give Goff time, then it's over. The back end for the Bucks is not good. We saw it with the when Hurts did have time. Jalen Hurts or uh, Devonta Smith was able to get yeah, open I mean, pretty yeah. routinely. I'm on Ross St. Brown. Is if you're if you're betting on the Lions, you you should correlate that with I'm on Ross St. Brown because I don't see how they beat this Bucks team without him having a big game. Yeah, and I think I think a lot of people are. are uh, Actually, I should look at the betting splits on this one because so uh fifty seven percent on the lines, forty three percent on the like, uh, similar to when we first <laughs> broke this game down. Can we get Photoshop requests for Jake? Can we get Ryan's head on Dominic on donkey? the donkey, the Italian Christmas donkey? Can we yeah, can we just get one of those rubber donkey heads like you have mm. dog mask? Oh, I feel okay. like that, yeah, let's see. This is the most evenly bet game, and I think you know we kind of highlighted earlier, but it's funny that this is the game between two number one overall picks, uh, the retreads, and, and and I and I do like you know t typically I do find myself on the contrarian side, and I came into this matchup thinking I was going to like the Bucks for a lot really? of the reasons you you said, but I, I, I when I got through it, and I'll be honest, I went back and watched the. Previous matchup, so maybe I'm, I'm maybe I'm holding that in too much regard. But I also went back and watched the Bucks last week, and we were kind of on the fence. Like, could the Bucks have uh, put up, you know, fifty on the Eagles last yeah. week? Yeah, so much of that was the Eagles just having no effort. Like, go go back and watch. So much of that, well, was, and some of it was drops, stuff like that too. Cer certainly, they left some points on the on the board. But what I'm saying is, the Eagles didn't come to play. Right, and, and I'm Detroit worried. Is going to I'm come worried to play. the controlled fury. Now, I, I mean, for Lions fans, in a in a weird way, I think you would have been better off if Cowboys won, because them going down to Dallas with that chip on their shoulder, I think, is almost a better spot for them. I think them being at home in front of that crowd again, that clearly had an impact on the game. And by the way, you talked about Jared Goff under pressure. Baker, not so good under pressure himself. I. To me, I think this is a similar step up in class, and maybe I'm holding Detroit too high, but this is a similar step up in class to me as the other games we're talking about. Hmm. Tam Tampa's not a good team. They want to trash the they want to trash division. Now they're in the playoffs in the divisional round where I I'm gonna keep it's calling just your it a filter. Falcons fan talking, Ryan. Gonna keep calling it a filter. I like the Bucks this year too. I'm not anti Bucks. I'm I, unfiltered. But, Give me the but, Bucks plus six and a half. But you're yeah, I'm 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 just chalky. Lay the points. Yeah. I'm just chalky. Ryan, uh, you were chalky. And if you're looking for chalk when it comes to the best meal delivery uh, company in America, you know who that is. Hello Fresh. That's right. Hello Fresh is America's number one meal kit for good reason. 
stuff is uh, super easy to prepare. I'm a horrible cook. I hate cooking. Uh, HelloFresh makes it easy, fun, and affordable. Uh, and the food's legit good. You know, I, I'm a guy who could, you know, mess up a boiled egg. Rice has been a real nemesis for me Jesus. in my cooking. Uh, I'm a disaster, but you get these hello fresh things. So easy to put together. My wife loves it. Oh my God. You put together a meal. Meanwhile, it took 15 minutes. I'm scoring a ton of husband points. Um, the quick and easy meals are delicious, nutritious. And again, ma- minimize the meal stress. We got, you know, two primetime games, Saturday, two primetime games, Sunday. Do you want to be at the grocery store this weekend? Of course not. So I got to sign up over on hello fresh. Love me some hello fresh. And my favorite part breakfast. Love breakfast. Can't start my day off without a nice, hot, delicious breakfast. And that's why I go to HelloFresh.com slash SGPN free and use go to SGPN free for a free breakfast for life. One breakfast item per box while the subscription is active. That's free breakfast for life. HelloFresh.com slash SGPN free with code SGPN free. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. All right, last game, 3 30 on the West Coast Sunday. So I guess that means maybe we'll uh, we'll we'll start early on the recap also uh, Sunday night, Sean. We'll we'll go live after the game. Kansas City Buffalo. They saved the best for last. Jim, Jim. Oh no, he's doing this game. I have to imagine this. It's is a team. CBS one. I I guess Feels I don't like know. It. Nowadays they don't they don't identify with conferences like they used to. But Buffalo laying two and a half here at home, minus one forty on the money line. Chiefs plus one twenty, forty six and a half is the total. All right, uh, you know Mahomes, the Mahomes dog trend. I I know I said I'm out on trends, but it's a very strong trend. Eight no, one it one. helps you let it rip. It's great, yeah. And you know, I guess worth noting because it's on the screen. But Josh Allen did turn the ball over a bunch uh, this Not year. Not last game, aka he's due. Uh, so a little bit shorter of a, a, a an angle on this one for me. Uh, a, it's a rematch. Yeah, and even revenge it, game. Even in the moment, we kind of said, "Well, this this regular season game is a lot more important to the Bills than it is the Chiefs." Yep. Perhaps they're just sitting back and collecting data. And I gotta say, I think I you know a little bit biased. Spags coached some Giants defenses to some glory, uh, but boy, they they really have become a team that I I don't think I give a shit what they looked like in the regular season. It's a single game game plan. They completely zeroed out Miami last week. And yeah, Miami, uh, it was cold, but Miami did put up a shitload of points the year before in the postseason in yeah. the cold against the tough defense and the and chiefs, so, unlo- you know, they're, they're fine playing in weather. That's but and, and yeah. So the, the chiefs ability to game plan scheme up a defense, I, I'm not totally concerned about their weakness against the run and on offense. Look, I understand why you could point to why they're not the team they've been in the past. Um, by the way, Sky Moore, I believe, was uh, designated to return. I don't know I'll if that changes out. your handicap, but I do think they have found something in Rice. Yeah, I do think they've found something in Pacheco, and I do think they found something in. Obviously, they have something in Travis Kelsey. So, do they really need much more than that? Send MVS down the down the field on go routes constantly. And and you know have some other guy have Kadarius Tony come out and do some dressing, but at I the mean, end of the day, it's a single game, and I trust this coaching staff, yeah, to 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 scheme up something on both sides of the ball. Who knows Sean McDermott better than the guy that hired him, Andy Reid? And you mentioned all the the reasons for the Chiefs' offense, and uh, you know all the all their weapons, what they should be able to do. I mean, you know, if this Bills team was completely healthy. I think it could be a different game, but dude, they're so banged up on defense. Christian yeah. uh, Benford, you know, taping this Wednesday night, but Benford DNP, uh, Terrell Bernard DNP, Gabe Davis hasn't been playing. Um, Micah ca- Hyde, full participant, but he's banged up. Leonard Floyd DNP. Uh, you know, I, they they are just incredibly, incredibly banged up and. Deontay Johnson was getting open, and he was fine. It, it, like Pittsburgh was able to move the ball against this Bills defense, and you know they came out. They had those two great drives um, to start the game, and and then kind of got sloppy. Kind of, I don't know, man. I I think there's going to be some opportunities. I think Rashi Rice is going to have a massive game, and I think they're going to be able to move the ball. And this is Mahomes' first road playoff game. 
I think he's got a chip on his shoulder. How do you handicap that? Like for you, what does that even mean? That uh, doesn't matter. No, like it's a fun nugget that the guys, the guys won so much and he's never played on the road in yeah. the postseason. But does I, it, I do. I think you know on the Bills on the other side, Khalil Shakir um, is a guy in the Bills. I do think is going to have a good game. Counter that a little bit, but this this Chiefs defense is pretty damn good. Um, granted, they were at home. Uh, you know, in a big game, it's gonna it, as simple as it gets. It's gonna come down to turnovers. I'm fading guys that I think are gonna turn the ball over, and I think Josh Allen is is due for one or two picks. Uh, it, last but not least, there's two days rest difference now. No, I think it's, that won't matter, Sean. I think it's. I know, think it matters big time this time of year. Coming off the bye, it's almost you have that whole rest versus rust thing. I think it's a little bit more of a nuanced discussion, but both teams that played. And they played in cold weather. Both teams got a little banged up. Bills, Bills are particularly injured. Uh, Bills aren't able to practice right now uh, because of all the weather stuff going on in Buffalo. Now, I'm on the Chiefs, but if they decide to move the game, now uh, Governor would be smart to move this game like they did last time for yeah, the Steelers. Get, get into a dome, right? I wouldn't be surprised if they try and move this game again for Buffalo. Um, Buffalo doesn't <laughs> like playing in the snow or cold weather. So if they can do anything like moving the game time, maybe move it to Monday. Don't be surprised. Then my then my handicap changes. Uh, but right now, with the rest disparity, with the injuries on the Bills, I mean, if I was the governor, I'd move the game too. I get it. I'm a, if I was a Bills fan, I'd move the game. Give you a couple extra days to get healthy. Avoid the wind. Um, yeah, I'm on the Chiefs plus two and a half. Don of Bills Mafia, Adam Pelletier was giving me shit for never for not picking the Bills recently. Yeah. Which is mostly true. But I did take them last week. And I watched them in a situation where they could have uh started it and gotten it done like the Packers and maybe actually had some time to rest. They got out there and then this this lowly Steelers team without their defensive lineman superhero TJ Watt. Started punching back, and to your point, it was Mason Rudolph. I mean, the run game certainly helped loosen some stuff up, but Mason Rudolph in this passing attack was starting to thread some needles in that secondary. Yeah, and then they got more banged up. I, I think we're gonna probably have. I think this is gonna. I'm gonna study this first touchdown market hard. I'm pretty. I I feel like we're gonna see a a a, a, a deep a deep pull hit something here. Because I think someone th they're gonna attack they, Andy they're gonna attack whoever the guy is that doesn't normally play, who hasn't played in a while. They're gonna come out with some weird look early on. They're gonna isolate him against like MVS or some fucking you know one of the one of the guys who sucks in their receiving core, and they're gonna go to town if they hit on a couple of those early. Uh, man, I to me everyone's gonna point to this as being the game that is the most competitive on the weekend. Mm. Maybe it is. I, I think this game could get out. I, I think this game could get interesting because your point, we, Josh Allen. If this happens and then Josh Allen has one of those mistakes, I'm trying too hard mistakes. Buffalo is so. Someone in the chat asked if I was uh, messing around about moving the game. Uh, I've heard a couple of rumblings already, and courtesy of NFL.com, Buffalo bracing for more heavy snow with lake effect warning in place. Ahead of <sighs> Sunday's Bills Chiefs showdown. That leg effect's a real motherfucker. Say it ain't snow. Chiefs at Bills playoff weather predicted. Uh, who does the weather help more? <coughs> Kansas City, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't they know. both have good run attack, running, run games. I do think that the run defense for the Chiefs gets much better uh, when they don't have to really worry. I mean, about Bills the struggle team. against the slot. They've allowed the seventh most production in the NFL to the slot position. Rashi Rice gotta have himself a day. Yeah, uh, the angle for why you like Buffalo is that they're gonna be able to run the ball. Yeah, you you look at the numbers, you say they're gonna be able to run the ball. But I would say like what happened last week, Miami elite running the ball. What and in a, in, a, in a tight game, who's gonna get tense? Patrick Mahomes or Josh Allen? That would, I mean, this this would be tough for Josh Allen and Bills fans. If this happens, what's next? Does McDermott get fired? I don't know. It's tough <laughs> to get fired after you win a playoff game and they they go on this incredible run. But <sighs> I don't know. You know, they're they're on a heater. Shout out to the Bills, An incredible run to get to the playoffs, uh, and and nice win over the Steelers. I just think it runs out for him here. So yeah, give me the Chiefs. Yeah. 
not not fun, but it does seem like this Chiefs team is right back in a position where their their team. I mean, this is the, they're the new Patriots, where their team is so much better in week nineteen than they are in, in week five. Um, yeah, and yeah, again, I I like that they have revenge on the mind. Revenge is on the mind. Hey, uh, time for our lock dog tease and bonus lock brought to you by Hall of Fame Bets. Uh, if you're looking to optimize some parlays, look to find that weak leg of the table, aka a 14 parlay, eliminate that leg, find a better leg. That should be their catchphrase. Find a better leg over find at hofbets.com or download the Hall of Fame Bets app. Great for deep dives on data. I, I use it a lot for the prop show. Shout out to Hall of Fame Bets and go to hofbets.com or download the app and use the promo code SGPN. 50% off your first month. Love me some Hall of Fame bets. Showtime, my homes. Realize we did the whole uh a whole chief uh Chiefs thing without getting to the showtime my homes. Come on, Sean. I know. Uh Ryan, of course, time for the lock dog and tease. Happy <laughs> What do you got for the folks, Kramer? I'll start with my dog. Give me the Kansas City Chiefs. Oh, okay. The one dog you have on the card. Well, two and a half versus plus one twenty five. No brainer, right? You're taking the plus one twenty five? Yeah. Okay. Uh I mean thoughts? You 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 uh you were worried about the points. It could be a twenty four twenty three type game. I mean, I do like them to win the <laughs> No, I'm saying well, it just happened with the Rams and the Lions. Yeah, I I and I I bought the half a point, gave myself a little safety blanket there and got the win. Um didn't need it, so I guess you could use that as a case against it. But yeah, I think I think two and a half and the money line both good. Lock Ravens. <laughs> Sorry, Texans, I love you, but not not as much as I love the Ravens this year. Uh, Other lock. I was I was actually trying to contemplate because I do have substantial exposure to Ravens conference, and it did seem reckless to also be laying nine and a half this week. But that's what I'll be doing. <laughs> <laughs> One week, it, I look at it, every bet as isolated uh, individual activities, so no need to tie those things together. Lock number two. Oh, you, you know, I, I'm just gonna piss a lot. Lock number two is the Niners. I'm just super chalk. Both these uh, Green Bay and Houston. It's Dominic the donkey. Well, uh, the public side is the dog, so it's it, you can call me a donkey, but give me the teams. I off just rest. like the sound drop coming out uh, with some heat. If I, here's my prediction. If for whatever reason, one of these doesn't come home, it's going to be because of some bullshit backdoor that Jordan love gets me <laughs> once again, this season tease, uh, I'll, you know, I'll include Detroit in the teaser. Cause I do think they're 100% getting the job done at home. <laughs> oh, uh, surprised at how many people are willy nilly saying, suggesting that a team from Tampa that will have no fans traveling to this game. Uh, is going to come in and upset Detroit in Detroit, not in my city. Uh, tease number two, Kansas City up to eight and a half. And uh, if you ask me which game I'm more confident on, it's the Ravens. Uh, let's tease it down to three and a half. Okay. All right. For You're my, up, Sean. For my first lock, give me Tampa plus six and a half, which is what it is currently at DraftKings. Hmm. My other lock. Hmm. KC plus two and a half. And for my dog, I like what producer Josh is doing on his card. I'm going to copy that. Give me the Bucks, Chiefs, money line Whoa. parlay. Whoa. And stay tuned to the Visa show. I think there's some fun uh, round robin opportunities here on this card. For my tees, Chiefs up to eight and a half. Uh, my other leg of the tees, give me the Bucks up to 12 and a half. And then last but not least, Play Give the donkey me. sound effect for yourself. It's <laughs> Dominic the donkey. Give me Casey Buffalo under fifty two and a half. It's mostly just because I think the uh, I like. Um, Should we add two more locks this week? <laughs> Why? So we could give it. A- <laughs> I'm just joking. I love all my picks the same. Yeah. I like my children. I just have to decide (laughs) what, how I'm doing this round robin money line parlay. I have not. I'm looking at all the options, figuring out. What do you mean? What do you want help with? I think if you're if you're thinking about doing what we were talking to Tyler earlier in the week about and and taking all four dogs. So I'm thinking of doing it by threes, and then also by four. I don't know if I want the twos because. 
if you do all the twos, it's 11 bets. And then I don't know, like if, if Tampa Bay and Kansas city hit, it's like, you're, you're still losing money. I don't know. I kind of like just going by threes and by four. That's what I'm deciding on. Or do oh. I go the full 11? I, I mean, you could also stagger in a way where you put more on the chalkier version. So like your twos are, are weighted towards the chalk. You're putting, you're risking more on the chalkier version so that mm. you're not like the scenario you're worried about. You're protected. Against. I think I'm gonna have to manually tell this to the, uh, the ticket writer because yeah. last time I said a, a money line round Robin, we were there for 10 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, you gotta, Pe Peggy seems to know what she's doing oh. in that kind of regard. Uh, but it is fun to just have them all on one ticket. Which so is what so I yeah, if I was like just spitballing, I would make the Kansas city, Tampa leg, uh, the, the, that two leg, I would maybe wait that three X. And then the other ones maybe drop down. See, but that's why that's why I think I'm just gonna play threes and four and then just bet Tampa Bay, Kansas City separately. Then that oh, so you're just gonna isolate it, only play that one yeah. two banger. I kinda think that's what I'm gonna do. Hey, if you're gonna do that, you should also do the two the two big dogs. Actually, right. you know, you probably should just round robin it. All you don't right. want to miss out on no, something. No, that's all. Well, that's why I'm. That's why I have a lot it's of the things playoffs. About. Yeah, come on. Plus, playoffs plus Evie. I I do like how Circa prints the uh, entire round robin on one small girthy ticket. Yeah, uh, and of course playoffs. Just said it. Fifteen percent off everything in the merch store. Uh, thank you as as always, everyone. Tune in. Big thanks to our uh, nice guest, Katie Mox. Of course, check out the Veasan Show, nine o'clock Pacific, midnight East. We got CJ in the building in person at Veasan, oh. and uh, scheduling update. Our prop show will be the Friday Vegas show. So I usually two thirty p.m. Pacific as scheduled. Two thirty p.m. Pacific live on YouTube, youtubecom slash podcast. And uh, trying to give away some more gift cards. So keep sending in some. Apple Podcast reviews, hooking up uh, some listeners, viewers over there. So we'll do the DFS show tomorrow, Ryan. Do we know the time then? 5 30, 6 o'clock? What do we do? Yeah, that's we that's generally when we've been okay. uh six o'clock Pacific for Stay that. Stay tuned. We're in the morning, we're live. Eleven AM yeah. college basketball. So eleven AM talking college hoops. Man, incredible uh last college hoops episode. We went six and zero oh on our locks and hit our three team lock parlay as well. So mm, you shouldn't pick oh college God. basketball till March. Oh, that guy's inspiring me. Our, our sample Bullets size board is, material. is getting large. I gotta be honest. And the discord, the, the consensus picks. I mean, at this point when we release something easy, calling me out saying, Sean, put that buck shit on cut. I'll well, see you over on cut. But yeah, follow me on social. Cause I will be dropping my $400 uh, 420. Uh, I, maybe I'll do, I wanted to do four locks. Maybe uh, we'll see what kind of weight I can push. Into this I also already got a nice chunk on green Bay money line over a cut. It was instantly accepted. So wow. shout well, you, out you to dealing cut. a bad price Sean. promo code S G P N. Thank you for participating in the Sports Gambling Podcast. For the Sports Gambling Podcast, I'm Sean at Second the Money Green. He's Ryan. Bang, bang, Niner Gang. Kramer, <laughs> let it ride.